Hello and welcome back to Path of Radiance 0% Growth. We are about to do Chapter 23, The Great Bridge. And unsurprisingly... Actually, wait. That is surprising. Tanith is the MVP. Hold <laughs> on. That is surprising. I was going to say unsurprisingly because like Tanith's usually the MVP, right? But like this time it's like, wait a minute. In the last chapter... And it's got one kill on Tominami, and Khalil got one kill on the boss. You would think the boss would be worth more. I guess not. Or maybe it's because Tanith won around it. I don't actually know how that works. Hmm. Well, in any case, um, as usual, I will be back after I do some stuff in the base. All right, so did a couple different things. Uh, first, I forged a sword for Tanith. There are a lot of axe-wielding enemies in the next chapter, or in this chapter, uh, which is unfortunate because I really would have liked to forge her a lance uh, for a couple reasons. One, just in general, lances are better, um, just they have higher might, and uh, although there are a lot of axe-wielding enemies in this chapter in particular, I have found in general that uh, Tanith is usually using lances. And then also the boss of the chapter, Petrine, uh, is more easily defeated with a lance than with a sword. But there's so many axe-wielding enemies that it actually really does make a difference to have Tanith have a uh, sword forge here rather than a lance. So that's what we're going with. Um, what else did, is there to talk about? Uh, Renolf. There, we have a new unit. So um, let's, uh, let's talk about that. So actually, let's go ahead and have uh, Renolf equip the Demiband. So you can see uh, what his stats look like. So, yeah, Renolf is um, is not a unit that I normally pay any attention to in a regular playthrough. Um, that's that's pretty true in Radiant Dawn too. Come to think of it, which is kind of sad because he has he has like a fair amount of prominence in the story, but he's generally like not really worth using. Um, but in um, in this context, he's actually quite good. So if you compare him to Morim, you may not remember what Morim's stats are offhand, um, but uh, basically, let's see, where's Morim? Um, actually, let's now unequip this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, just trying to find the easiest way to show this off. All right, I guess they're at the top and the bottom. That's good enough. So as you can see, uh, Renolf has more strength, more speed, more defense, more res, more skill. Like, he's just across the board better. Which is uh, not super surprising, given that, you know, he joins later. He actually even has more HP. Um, but nonetheless, like, you know, Morim's been a... Like, a linchpin unit uh, in my army up to this point. So the fact that we're now getting a Laguz who is just ha has just better stats across the board is, is actually fantastic. Um, he, unlike, um, unlike Lath, uh, Renolf does not start fully transformed, which is, uh, certainly unfortunate. He has, I want to say 10 gauge, so it would take him, uh, two turns. Like, he'll start on turn one. It, every, everybody goes up four at the beginning of the turn. So, like, Lath starts at 16, but then immediately goes to 20 and transforms. He starts at 10, goes to 14, and then it's going to be two more turns until he transforms. Which is too slow, um, and that's why I have him uh, with the demi band uh, and not Morim. The unfortunate thing is that Morim um, does have a base gauge value. I want to say it's like five. It's not very high, um, but because of the way the demi band works in this game, he doesn't get to use it in this chapter. Basically, if you have the demi band equipped to like when you transition chapters, then your transformation gauge is wiped out if you want to equip it. Um, so, unfortunately, I am, so I am going to give Renault the demi band, but unfortunately that means Morim is not ready to transform, uh, or not even, I mean, not, not even just not ready, but is, is, is maximally unready to transform in this chapter, um, a la Mordecai. Um, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, so Renolf um, is definitely, like, a good unit, a frontline unit that we're going to be making use of. Um, obviously doesn't have, so we can look at his weight, uh, it's 24 untransformed, it's, let's see, I want to say 36, yeah, 36 transformed, uh, so obviously, um, 
he doesn't have the like shove slash slash smite utility that Mordecai or Morim do, but he's still um, going to be pretty valuable for his combat. Um, I, I mean, even though he has better combat than Morim, and Morim has had good combat to this point, I will say like you know the usual the usual problems still still do apply like lack of flight, lack of canto, lack of ability to use forged weapons, lack of ability to use one two range weapons, and um, Renulf is not like enough of an upgrade combat wise over Morim to where now he's going to be like the star of the show, um, but he's definitely still going to be useful. All right, so I think that's it. Um, so let's uh, move out. All right, so this is a seas map. It is the Bridge of Pitfalls. Uh, Petrine is the boss, and let me tell you, this map is tough. It's the the enemy quality um, has improved to the point where it's just really hard to one round enemies right now. You you pretty much need uh, Stefan or Tanith with a forged weapon to be able to do it. Um, I mean, Torneo can do it if he doubles, but he isn't doubling the vast majority of enemies at this point. Renulf is just like a little bit short of uh, one rounding in general. Um, Tanith is a little bit short if she's not using a forge. Uh, and I and 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 I, I I didn't even mention the silver forges. Right, I for completely forgot to mention that in the base. This is the first chapter we have access to silver forges or to the ability to purchase silver weapons directly, um, which is why like it, that's such a big limitation because I don't have. I haven't had the opportunity to forge both, both a silver sword and a silver lance. If I could have done that, I would have wanted to have both of those for Tana at this chapter, but it's not an option. It's, so I had to choose between one or the other. And the unfortunate thing is that the boss, Petrine, is like easily the toughest boss to take down that we've encountered thus far. If uh, you look at her bulk, it's pretty similar to Ina. I mean, Ina had a little bit more HP, I want to say, like 50-something. Um... And maybe a little bit, like, maybe 22 defense and resistance or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly. Um, but Petrine has a lot more speed. She doesn't get doubled by anybody that I have right now. Um, and that's a, that's a huge problem. In addition to that, she's dealing a lot of damage, magic damage, with her Flame Lance. It's 1 to 2 range. Uh, so she's just, like, really tough to deal with. Um... Yeah, so, I, and that's why I would like to be able to forge Tanith a Lance. Tanith isn't going to double Petrine, but at least she'd have more damage and more accuracy with a Lance. But, I mean, if you look at the enemy composition in this chapter, Axe, 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 Axe. This guy's got a Lance. Axe, Axe, Axe. Some Lagoos, doesn't matter. Sword. Um, these these guys disappear. Hard disappears, and we recruit him this chapter, but they, they, they don't uh, stay in this position. Axe, 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 axe. And then we get a couple lances. Well, that guy's got a bow. And a lance, bow and a sword. Axe, lance, axe. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of axes in this chapter. And these enemies are, like, super bulky, too. Like, just a lot of HP. So, so that's the situation. Anyway, in terms of who we're bringing, it's Ike, Muarim, Tormod, Tanith, Rayson, Mordecai, Kieran, Stefan, Riss, Marsha, Jill, Renolf, and Torneo. And I guess I can go ahead and get started. I've probably been talking for too long at this point. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do... Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on this guy's range. So I didn't even talk about the ballistas, but there's a bunch of different things going on in this chapter. And one of the things that's going on is these ballistas. So there's a, a ballista here, here, then two ballistas here, and a stone thrower here. The stone thrower doesn't really matter too much. Um, these are killer ballistas, so they can be pretty scary. They have 20 might. Um, so against... Um, you know, against a character with decent defense, they're not, like, that scary unless they either, you know, taking effective damage or do get hit by a crit. Um, but that is, you know, uh, definitely a risk. Um, and then this is, like, the long-range ballista, so it's got, it, you know, it's going all the way out to here at 15 squares rather than 10. 
Um, so for the first turn, we're concerned about like who's in and out of this range, and we're and the plan is to take out this guy so that we can at least advance into the range of this ballista. All right. Um, but the first thing I'm actually going to do is have Torneo come over here and shove Stefan so so that he can run up and take out this guy. So in terms of the pitfalls that are immediately relevant, there's one here, and there's one here. So we can actually kind of um, use this side. This side is basically already a choke point. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, we can use this side as a choke point if we just have units like around the pitfall so that like the enemies can't get to our squishier units behind. So that is the plan. Um, so to facilitate that, uh, Tanith is going to come up here and take this guy out. Bang. And then we're going to shove race in a couple times, once with Riss. And once with Ike. And that's going to give Raisin enough movement to chant for Tanith and then drop one space back out of range of that other ballista. And then we can come up here with Tanith, take out the archer manning the ballista. And we do need the um, to use the forge, unfortunately, because we want to be able to one round the enemies that attack Tanith on enemy phase. And then she's going to come here, which is going to be part of our um, block around this, or like our choke point here around this pitfall right here. Um, notice she's also got the full guard, of course. So she will not take effective damage from the ballistas. And the enemies do actually pay attention to that, which is interesting, because I thought, at other times I've thought that they didn't pay attention to that, but they definitely change their targeting depending on whether Tanith has the full guard equipped or not. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is Mordecai is going to come up and smite Renolf, who does not have the demi band equipped, uh, because he weighs 36 if he does, and Mordecai only has 33 weight. Now that he's done that, we're going to equip the demi band so that Renolf can move his full nine movements and attack this guy. He's probably not going to kill him. He'd have to crit. Um, but it turns out that uh, the enemies, even though, so this guy will run away. Um, there's a couple of Physic using sages back here, one here and one here, and the, the some these enemies, if I don't one round them, will run away and try to get healing, which is one of the reasons I want to want want to one round them. Um, but for whatever reason, damaging this guy and having him want to run away causes the other enemies to position themselves more favorably for me. Not exactly sure why. Okay, so then uh, we're going to. Rescue drop Stefan forward just a little bit with Marsha and with Kieran, um, which accomplishes two goals. One is, well, it gets Stefan closer to the action for next turn, which is relevant. And the other is, with Stefan here, the Ballista will target him, and then he can get healed by racing, and so we effectively don't take the damage. Um, Tormod's just going to run up here. And then we're going to have Jill... Come over. So Har is going to show up over here uh, on turn three. Well, it's it's actually not turn based; it's area based. But I trigger the event to happen on turn three, um, so that's why we have Jill in the back here. But she can help a little bit in getting Riss further forward by rescuing him here. And then Morim is going to come up, take Riss, drop him off. Renolf not taking damage, that's nice. Yeah, so you can see kind of what I'm talking about, about one-rounding these enemies. It's pretty tough. I did not double-check... Oh, okay, whether Tanith would one-round that guy with, without the Forge Sword, but... 
for the most part, she doesn't like. Sometimes she, with a regular silver sword, she would have exact damage, but it's pretty inconsistent and depends on like the randomized enemy stats. Okay, so now first thing we're gonna do is Stefan is gonna come up and take out this guy with the short axe. We haven't actually taken any damage, which is pretty nice. Um, so now uh, we want to have Tanith take out this cat here. Um, so we're going to have her come up and use the Laguz Lance to do that. Oh, I don't like that hit rate, but what can you do? If she does fail to get... Okay, not a problem, and she didn't take any damage. That's very nice. Okay, I should have turned on the range of the rear ballistas, but basically we're going to put Tanith here because what we want to... So this spot is like the forwardmost spot that is not in range of these two ballistas in the back. So um, we want basically uh, for Tanith to end up here and to attack this guy at close range so that she doesn't take a counterattack. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to put her here. And plan to chant for her with Rayson. Speaking of which... Oh, wait. No, i got to do this first. Tornado's going to come over here and shove Ike forward. So that Ike... Can shove... Rayson sideways. So that Mordecai can sh smite Rayson. But before we do that, we need to get Torm out of the way. Tormod out of the way. So he's going to come up and finish this guy off. Okay, and then we will go ahead and smite Rayson. Uh, the other thing I want to do is, so we have this injured guy here. I would I would like to try to take him out with Marsha. I may fail. We're going to give it a shot. Oh, that's actually a pretty good hit rate. Yeah. And then we're going to drop Marsha back here so that she can't get attacked by anything except for this Blizzard Mage right here. But the Blizzard Mage will not one-round her, or one-shot her, really. Um, and this puts her in a position to be able to take out the Blizzard Mage next turn, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we actually don't have any injuries to heal. Remarkable. Um, so we basically... Let's see. One, two, three, six... Seven. Um, what we're going to end up doing is Rayson is going to chant for Tanith and then Anto back here, and then Renolf is going to rescue and Kieran is going to drop. Um, I don't think there's any reason to... I don't actually need to smite Rayson to do this, I think. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I don't think there's a reason to prefer moving more. I'm up. Um, normally, I want more to do this because I potentially use risk to do some healing this turn, but nobody took any damage, so I don't need to do that, but I think we're still going to do this. Because um, it works doing it this way, so I might as well just stick to the plan. I still forgot to turn on those ballista ranges. I'll do that just to illustrate the point. This one here and this one here. Okay. Um, and yeah, then we want to rescue Rayson. Take. Drop. Meanwhile, Tanith is going to come in here. She's going to now equip the full guard instead of the Laguz guard. And attack this guy with her forged spear, or javelin rather, uh, so that she can counterattack those sages. And the fact that we have no injured enemies right now is really helpful for that because they will prioritize healing, but we really want to take them out on enemy phase here if we get the chance. So hopefully we will. I mean, if depending on the order the enemies attack in and whether any of them survive, they one or more of them might end up healing an enemy anyway, but hopefully, hopefully not. 
Okay, so then Riss is just gonna come up here. Oh, Rusty, right. And then Jill is gonna come back here to talk to Har next turn. All right, there's one of the sages. Get him. Nice. So many crits from Tanit so far. Saving the forge charges, which is really nice. Ooh. Man. Hope I'm not using up all my good RNG too soon. Because we're going to need some of it against uh, that shrine. Ow! Alright, yeah, so in this case... Because, I think I think that actually... Because the guy with the axe actually hit Tanith, I think... Um, this guy's healing AI actually saved her, because I think he would have killed her. Yeah. So, but that's fine. Okay, so, yeah, so meanwhile, we got a whole bunch of reinforcements back here. Um, so now that Torneo's done his job shoving, he's just gonna, like, have fun killing them. Um, he doesn't really need to do this. Um, they don't, like, really pose much of a threat to catch up to my other units, but we're gonna do it anyway. Just to make absolutely sure, because he's not gonna be able to do anything else anyway. Um, meanwhile, let's talk to Har. Recruit him. And book it out of there. And Har will come up here as well. And Ike is going to come trade him some weapons. And a Vulnery and a Pure Water. You might guess what I might want to use that for. Um, so let's talk about Har, I guess. Um, Har is definitely not... You know, it's this is definitely not Radiant Dawn Har, um, but for 0% growth, he's a good unit for sure. His speed is, you know, it's not the best, unfortunately. And what makes it really unfortunate is that I can't afford to give him any speed wings to help with that, um, because I need to save them for Ina. <laughs> but, um, but you know, he's definitely uh, like a really nice unit to have. Um, the strength and defense are excellent. The HP is excellent. Obviously, you know, 9 move, flight, canto, all that good stuff. Um, starts with B rank axes, which is actually a little disappointing because you can't use silver axes right out of the gate. So um, that's, yeah, that's unfortunate. He's got to rely on steel forges. Um, but, um, you know, he deals, he, he deals a lot of damage. He can use the brave axe, uh, which... Um, you know, he can obviously do a lot of damage with, although not so much against Petrine. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, at this point, I, I would still say Tanith is a better unit, um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, even ignoring Reinforce, um, she's, the, the speed difference, um, and the fact that she can, like, she's lighter, so we can smite her more easily. Although, Transformed Mordecai can smite Har. I don't no, if transform more and can though, not sure about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I think Tanith is a better unit, like I said. But uh, but I mean, he's he's up there for sure. Um, and I'm definitely like excited to get to use him in this game um, because normally I, I don't really. Uh, okay, I think that's all we need to say about that. So. Where were we? Killing enemies, I guess. So yeah, next up, uh, we're gonna have Stefan take this guy out. And you may have noticed I've completely ignored this one mage over here. This guy just does not move. Um, he's like, he's blocking his, his pitfall and he's gonna stay there. 
He's going to block it, so we don't care about him at all. <laughs> um, so we're going to come over here now and take this guy out with Marsha. Get the Blizzard Tome, which we probably won't ever use, but... Well, maybe. Alright, so now uh, we want to do... What we want to do with Tanith is finish off this guy and take out this guy. Um, let's see... Okay, that looks pretty good. We have the full guard equipped. Yes, we do. Let's turn these guys back on. So... And there is a slight chance that Tanith... Um dies here if she misses the first attack. So I will go ahead and actually equip the Laguz guard and heal her before I attack. I mean, I'm going to need to do... Uh, uh, I'll assume I can, which I should be able to. Oh, actually, no. Riss definitely can't, but Tormod can. So let's do that. Let's have him go here. So it won't be a full heal anyway. So if she takes damage from the Sage, we can heal that up with Riss if we want to. Um, in fact... Let's see, does it make sense? No, I think we gotta take out the Goose first. Um, so... Oh, you know what else? We could probably go ahead and get... Kieran out of the way of... So we're going to smite uh, Raisin with Mordecai. To do that, we need to get these two out of the way. And what they're going to do is rescue Stefan. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Um, so in terms of pitfalls in this area, by the way, um, there's one here uh, in front of that uh, Siege Tome mage that we just killed with Marsha. And then there's also one here in front of this guy. Um... There's, and then there's also one right here, um, which is th this one is pretty important. Um, but I guess as long as I'm mentioning all that, there's also it falls right here, but that'll come up more later. Anyway, so I'm gonna equip the boomerang because there is a guy with a short spear up there. I'm up here. Take Stefan. Drop him there. Um, and then what we want to do uh, is... Oh, wait, no. I was going to do the smite first. And we could um, smite racing again, but we don't really need to because he can get like all the way up here, uh, which is plenty far. All right, so we're going to put uh, Tanith right here to make it easier uh, for her to attack the mage and then get into position from there. Or Sage, whatever. So let's see. Oh, wait, we need to... Put the full guard now. I think that's what we're gonna want to use. So we did. There is this guy here with the axe. So let's check the damage on him. Okay, that's not a kill, unfortunately. So yeah, I think we do need to go with that in case this guy attacks Tanith, um, which, which he probably will over Stefan, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, meanwhile, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I guess since. Um, We're not going to be able to heal... All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. So we might as well do this now. Since we're not going to heal Tana, be able to heal Tanith after she attacks. And then we're going to have more more and come up and smite Riss, which doesn't really matter too much, but... I, I need more moving forward for reasons that will come up later. Oh, nice. Let's go, Tanith. Damn. 
putting in work this chapter. All right, so we're going to have Tanith park on the Pitfall so that we can cross it next turn more easily. Ow. Okay, he is going to go for Stefan. Nice. Not that that crit probably matters, but it's still nice. All right, and now we have to wait for Torneo to fight all these guys. <laughs> Which he does with no trouble whatsoever. I really wanted to deploy Janoth instead. Um, or find a way to deploy him because, you know, more flyers on this map seems like a good idea. But I could not figure a good way to make use of him, like, while still getting those two initial shoves in that Torneo does. So. Like, if he were the one doing the shoving, he would just be too far behind. And deploying him over Marsha doesn't make sense because Marsha has an extra point of movement in Kanto, and she's not doing that much combat anyway. Okay, so now we're going to get Har moving forward. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out, even though we don't need to, because it's fun, and it makes me feel like I'm playing Radiant Dawn to watch Har just obliterate some poor defenseless mage. And as well, we're gonna grab Ike, get him moving. Okay, so we should be able, so we got the pitfall here, but we can cross it because Tanith is standing on it. We should be able to take this guy out with Renolf, hopefully, yes indeed. Um, Tanith is gonna be taking out this guy who has a, a hand axe, so we, which is why we wanna uh, kill him on player phase, and then this guy, because uh, he'll, he, he, like, we want to be able to move through here next turn. Um, so it should be Stefan taking out this guy. Just need to make sure I don't screw up my positioning here. Tanith ends up here. Oh, you know... Hmm... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Okay, I think I think this is fine. So it in my previous attempt at this chapter, Marsha ended up here. Because this guy wasn't here. He was like I don't know, he was maybe here. I I'm not exactly sure, but I think it I think it's fine. I think it'll it'll be fine to put stuff on here. So, just do that. Bang. Um, I think I mentioned the pitfalls. Uh, but the reason Renolf can't... Um, oh, actually, wait. Is that true? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, he totally could have circled around. I'm a dum dum. Well, luckily it doesn't matter, but <laughs> I just realized for some reason I was thinking the pitfalls are here, here, and here. For some reason I was thinking he couldn't circle around this guy because he would run into the pitfall, but that's not true. He'd go right here. It'd be completely fine. Okay, well, luckily um, it doesn't matter, but uh, I do feel a little silly. For now, just now realizing that. <laughs> anyway, all right. So we want to see. Oh, I see the problem with having Stefan here. It's going to be in the way of racing. 
Uh, yeah, we might need to rescue Stefan with Marsha after we move with Tanith. Okay, that's fine. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does that work? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, maybe that does work. Uh, so basically, Tanith needs to come out down here, and then needs to be like here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the spot I want her to end in. Because neither of these tigers can reach that spot, but this guy with an axe can reach it, this guy with an axe can reach it, um, this guy, no, there's another, there's, I thought there was one other guy. Well, in any case, I want her to enemy face those two warriors. Um... So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, from here, okay. So we could, so what we could do is just rescue drop Grayson instead of Stefan. That would work. Yeah, Grayson's going to transform next turn, so we're not too worried about his movement. Like, about how far forward he, forward he is for next turn. I think I'm going to just do that. Not forget to re-equip the full guard. That's good. All right, so we don't need. I mean, yeah, we do need Marsha to switch. Actually, wait. What if we? What if we do this? We rescue Stefan. Park there with Marsha. Have Iran come around. Drop him here, and then come back to here or to here. Yeah, I think that would work pretty well. All right, let's do that. That way we can... Well, of course, we're going to have a healer be able to come up and heal uh, Stefan anyway. Maybe we'd even prefer that. But that still means we want to rescue him. I think I'll just put Kieran there. Alright, Mordecai. I guess you can smite Tormod. I don't think it's going to matter. But you can do it. Swing Tormont all the way around here. Oh, yeah. This uh, this guy's got a Vulnerary, so we're going to kill him. Yar. Oh! It hurts.
Okay, good. <laughs> I'm getting a little scared now. But this guy won't hit, surely, and I doubt the other warriors will either. Oh yeah, this guy. I guess I didn't mention him when I was talking about enemy phasing people. But he could have attacked Renolf. But yeah, that's, that crit is why I don't want to be leaving Tanith in range of those Ballistae unless I need to, which I did this turn. But like why, even though I have the full guard, I, didn't, I kept her out of range of those things. It's like if they do crit, that can be really bad depending on what other enemies she has to fight. Almost done with these enemies. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, Tornado's combat's pretty good. It's just, you know, he's slow and he does he's not one rounding, he's having to kill all, most of these enemies over two rounds of combat. So it's not efficient, but it is effective. It's definitely effective. Alright, so now some green units are about to show up. And we get our Tigers transformed, as well as racing. Okay, so now we're gonna set up a chant that involves Har. So Har is just gonna come up here and we'll go ahead and use the Pure Water. Um, this is a good opportunity for him to do it. Uh, to reduce the amount of damage he's gonna take against Petrine. Um, I don't necessarily need him to have done that. Like I can potentially take her out without doing that, but it might make a difference depending on how things go. Anyway, so um, then now that we know we're setting up a chant here, um, we're going to have Stefan involved in that um, by coming over here and taking this guy out. Since that's the only spot he can attack from that is part of the chant. Um, I mentioned already uh, that there's one, two, three pitfalls like going across here. Um, so... Having Har here uh, does help with that. Um, and specifically, so let's look at, this guy's got 16 speed, this guy's got 14 speed, and this guy has got uh, nine speed. Okay, so we can actually double this guy with Morin and this guy with, um, with Kieran. It's really nice. So, um, let's... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we want to get. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We want to get another, uh, like flyer here if possible. But maybe it's. Oh no, it is possible. Right, Jill. That's. I was like, why? It's like I know I've done this. What did I need to do? Right. So Jill comes up here and occupies this spot, which is going to let Kieran get to here and get chanted. Um, but Morim is not going to get chanted. He's just going to. Uh, come up here and it's this guy. Not quite one round him, but yeah, close enough. That is to say, we have have ways of taking care of that. Now, um, I guess for the la final couple pitfalls, there's one here and there's one uh, here, and then there's pitfalls here and here. Um. So because of those pitfalls, so for, well, first of all, I'm gonna have, um, because of the error that I realized where I could have walked around this guy but didn't, um, more, oh, sorry, Mordecai is gonna come up here and smite Renolf. Um, now that puts him in range to attack this guy, but because of the pitfalls here, he can't actually get there. So what we're gonna do is have Marsha take out either this guy or this guy. Um, I'm not actually sure which one quite yet. 
Um, but what I am going to do... Let's see. Let's have Tanith take this guy out. And... Stefan has not taken damage. Okay, so that's good. So we might actually be able to have Tormod in these. Actually, do we know for sure? Do we know for sure that Kieran doesn't one around this guy? We don't yet. Now we do. Okay. But yeah, I think we'll use Tormod to finish that guy off. So we're gonna have. Marsha, pop that guy. And then just park on one of these pitfalls so that we can run Renolf across it. Take this guy out. And then... We can now have Kieran come across here. Double this guy. Go back here. And then we're gonna have let's see, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, yeah. We're gonna have Rayson Chant. And then he's gonna sit on the pitfall. Or is he actually? No, you know what? No, he's not. Just kidding. That was my old plan, but I changed it the last time I tried it, and this works better. He's just gonna come over here. Um. Yeah. So now we're gonna have Stefan come over here, take out this guy. And we're gonna have Tanith. Oh, Tanith needs healing. It's healing. Um, just trying to make sure I don't walk over any pitfalls. Oh, also, we got to take out that, uh, take out this guy. Oh, and we're also going to have, I might as well just do this now. And that's why I didn't want to put racing on the pitfalls. My plan before involved putting Har here and race to block these guys from getting to race and then racing on the pitfall. Um, but uh, it turns out that having Har closer to Petrine is useful. So, so we're not doing that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to... finish this guy off. Tormod. And we're going to equip the Wagoo's Guard. We have nothing to full guard against now. And take this guy out. Oh, no! Okay, that's fine. We've actually got... I mean, as long as we're doing that, we might as well do this. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, our poor abused sword is already down to 8 out of 25 uses. Alright, and then... Um, I'm actually... Oh, I can't, I can't do that. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Just want to double check. Yeah, they do 15 damage each. 
no, 15 and 16, but that won't kill Kieran. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This, one of them might go after um, for Marsha. But the point is, we want, ideally, um, for them not to get in the way of of Har. Um, which, I mean, if they do, we potentially can deal with that. But in order to make that easier, hopefully, I'm just going to arc here with Kieran. And Torneo, whatever. <laughs> Ow. And now we're going to get to see some green unit combat. Hooray, hooray. to see the green units be dumb. Not this part, but uh, the part where the other guy with the bow attacks the one with 5 HP rather than the one that's at full health, leaving his buddies with one range weapons to engage in close combat. Good job, green units. This part of the chapter is like so irrelevant. I don't know why it's even included. I don't think these green units can really do anything to Petrine, so it's not like you're gonna use them to help you kill the boss. Okay, so now Let's check out our situation fighting against Petrine. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to seize this turn. Um, just wanna make sure that I get my... So yeah, Stefan comes here, Ike gets dropped here, Tanith and Nahar go there and there, that's all good. Let's see, eight damage, 11, oh, look at that hit rate. Oh wow, good job, Tanith. Now what's sad is this, like, Har could do some extra damage with the Poleaxe, but the hit rate is just absolutely atrocious. Oh man, he's one damage short of uh, actually having enough to not get healed, but it's fine. His hit rate is good. Oh, what? No! Duh! You have like an 89, dude! Come on! Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. Uh, just to check. 66. If we have to do that, which we really hope we don't. Um. Got the ward. Stefan, how much damage does Stefan take? I guess it probably doesn't matter, because he's only going to attack once anyway. Alright. Do this. So we get 11 damage from that. We get... ...from that. Yeah, we just need everyone to hit. That's really what it comes down to. Um... Oh, we could actually... Use a men's staff here.
I need you to hit this Hanhar. Nice. Let's go. Alright, so we got... What's the Fawn's hit rate? 82. Alright, I'm gonna try this first, even though... Um, I'm gonna need to knock him out of the way if he doesn't crit. Okay. And now we can bring it on home with Tanith. Let's do this. She's actually got a 100% hit rate thanks to her support with, um, with Racing. Bang. And we get the Flame Lance. And there you have it. Six turns for chapter 23. Yeah, that one is like, um, like I said, this, there's, a lot, there's a, a lot of things to consider. It took me a pretty long time to develop my strategy for that. Like trying to manage the pitfalls, the ballistas, like just like how bulky the enemies are and trying to make sure the Tanith doesn't die. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty tough, but, uh, and Petrine is no joke. No joke. Like, I, it's kind of funny because, um, normally when I have played Path of Radiance, you know, like, they build Petrine up and then I, I've never felt like, you know, oh man, she's like so difficult to, to deal with or whatever. It's like, yeah, she, you know, she's whatever. Um, she's no Black Knight, you know, that kind of thing. But playing on 0% growth, you really feel that like, from a story standpoint, they're like, oh, yeah, Petrine's scary. Like, holy crap. Um, makes me wonder what fighting Bertrand's going to be like. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for Chapter 24. Until then.